Okay, so now I just want to, we'll do an actual, we've been looking in class already at pointers. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do just an example to show you how to use uh, a type definition to create a, uh, an int pointer type instead of just always using int star. And we'll see in the next example that I do why this is useful. But first, I just want to show you syntactically what we're doing. Uh, so normally, how would we create a pointer here? Right, we'd use an asterisk, so we do something like int star p1. Oops, capital locks on, sorry. Int star p1. And that creates a pointer to an integer, right? And, of course, where does it point when we first create it? Nowhere, Nowhere right? We've just created some pointer here. Now, we could also have some integer like tb20. Uh, and we could then do, if we wanted to point P1 to T's address, what would we do? If we wanted to have the pointer P1 point to our address T. Right, so we'd say P1 equals T. T allow, means the value T. So if we want to get the address of an ordinary variable, we use ampersand. So we go ampersand T. Great. So, um, and if we want to actually see out the difference here, let's just actually go, um, let's display out the value and address of the pointer and display value and address of ordinary variable. So, if we want to display out this, so what we could do is we could say here, if we wanted to get, if we want to display star P1, right? If we want to say what this was, this is the value, right? Star P1. This is just a string here. If we went star P1, that displays what? That does display our value, right? And if we want to display the address, actually, maybe what I'll do is I'll put a tab here. And if we want to display the address here, the address, how do we access the address of a pointer variable? We just use P1 here without the star in front of it, right? The star allows us to access the value without the star accesses the address. Okay? Now, if we wanted to do the same thing for X, should we run this first just to see what this does? Okay, let's just run this. So um, let's actually compile this. We're going to use G++ to compile it. And we'll just do pointers. Oops, sorry, I'm not in the wrong direct. I'm in the wrong directory. So as we just mentioned, um, the, what we're going to expect here is the value for the star P1. Since we on this line here said P1 equals the address of T. What we're going to get, what we expect for the value here is to be the value of t, which is 20. The address here is going to be some hexadecimal value, and it's basically going to be a memory address. So let's just see if this is actually what we get here. So are we in the right place? No. I just Let me just change directory really, really quickly. Okay, and we're going to go G++, uh, pointers, example one. See if it compiles, and it does, and now we're going to run it, and we get that the value of star P1 was 20, which is what we expected, and we get that the address was some big number, and in hexadecimal. What's hexadecimal, by the way? Yeah, so you've probably covered this in your other class, Intro to Computing. You talked about that yet? Okay, you'll probably talk about it then next semester in the architecture class. Um, basically here... Um, Normally, what we work with is the decimal system, right, which is base 10, meaning that we have 10 different digits, 10 different symbols that we use for, to make numbers. 
we have 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9. And if we want to make a number bigger than that, what do we have to do? We have to combine the symbols together. We combine the 1 with a 0, 1 with a 1, that's you know, 11, 12, 13, and so on. And we keep combining them to make them bigger. Um, hexadecimal is a base 16 number system, meaning that we have 16 different symbols. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, just like in decimal. But the other symbols we start using after that, the other six symbols, we just take them from the alphabet. So we, after 9, we represent 10 by the letter A. 11 is B, C, D, E, and F. And that gets us all the way up from 0 to 15. If we want to go bigger than that, we then start combining digits together in the same way. Uh, so what we end up is large numbers, rather than being represented just by all 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9, they have in them 0 up to 9 and A, B, C, D, E, and F as well. So that's what a hexadecimal number is. You do not need to have to know that for this course. I'm just explaining it so you understand for interest, but uh, you will be covering it in a later course. Yes? Oh, the tab? Uh, so the tab just will do it. Yeah, it may be that the next tab is only one space away. So it depends. Um, but yeah, usually it would, it would give you more. But, uh, but yeah, so, let's, so what I wanted to do next, though, is I wanted to also display out the same information we just saw for x. So if we want to display out the value for x, how do we display out x's value? We just refer, we just use x, right? So if we use x, that'll display at whatever x is, is, right? And we'll use our tab again. What? Oh, did I use t? I did x. Yeah, you're, sorry, you're right. Uh, x was the, from the example that we did in the slides. We call the t here. So. Uh, if we want to display out the address of t, what, how do we display an ordinary variable's address? We use the address of operator, which is what? Ampersand t. Right. And then, and so we'll do that here, ampersand t. Oops, we'll, do an, we'll just do an line here, actually. Great. So what should we see displayed out on that line for t? Can someone tell me what the output will be when we run the program now? Devin? Right, so the value t will be 20 as well. And the address of ampersand t of the that will should be the same memory location as where our pointer P1 points to. Why should it be the same? Well, the reason it's the same is we actually said right here, P1 is going to point to the address that T is, has. So because of this line here, we've made P1 be the same as the address T. So let's run this and see if it actually does what we expect. We'll compile it first, and then we'll run it. And we can see here the question about the tabs, right? You can see here that it just was that we were right by a tab. So, that, so when we do the tab on the next line, see how it's aligned it properly? So the tab was working. It's just it was just one space here. So maybe for this one, we might want to have two tabs or something just to space it out. So what we see here is that star P1 for our pointer allowed us to access the value for ordinary variable just using the variable name did. To get the address of P1, we just use it without the star. And to get the address of our ordinary variable T, we use it with the ampersand. And what do we notice about the two addresses here? They are the same. Right. So that's just a little bit explaining about pointers. Now, what I also mentioned was uh, I'm going to show you why this is useful in a second, but that's just a little bit of introduction to pointers. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was, is that in C++, we can actually use something called a typedef, 
to allow us to um, essentially create a special type called an int pointer. So rather than having to always, when we declare it, use int star, we can just use an int pointer instead. Now, it doesn't mean we can't, we, ha we still use the dereferencing, the star operator, uh, whenever we want to access the value of the pointer. But when we declare it, what it means is, is that rather than doing what we just did here, we can just go, we're going to have an int pointer p1. So this is just a little bit of a notational convenience. And I'm going to show you the benefit of it in our next example uh, when we see how we can pass pointers to functions um, and how this can be beneficial to have this int pointer here.